Do you own a Roborack vacuum? Were you using the Hacks integration for Home Assistant? Is it broken now? No. When's the last time you updated your system? The developer no longer supports it. So I'm going to show you how to switch to the native integration in five easy steps. And don't worry, you can still do most, if not all the things that you could do before. I'm also going to show you everything that I set up for my vacuum, including notifications. Even if you have some other brand of robot vacuum, you might get some good ideas. So stay tuned. Hey, I'm Jeff and you're watching Fast How To, a channel where I discuss smart homes, smart home products and tech, and other related nerd topics. If that sounds like something you're interested in, or if you'd just like to hang out with me, go ahead and slap that subscribe button. Appreciate it. Some months back, one of the Home Assistant updates broke the RoboRock hacks integration. <laughs> what a pain in the ass. For a while, we just used the RoboRock app. But the other day, I finally got sick of that and decided that I was going to figure out what broke and how to fix it. Turns out the developer of the Hacks integration had stopped supporting it, so that prompted the developer of the native integration to get to work making some improvements, and make improvements they did. This integration does everything that I needed to do, including showing me the map. I'm super stoked. The native integration is classed as local polling, but it does still use the cloud for some features. The integration will also fail back to cloud communication if for some reason the local communication isn't working. In addition, you cannot block the vacuum from accessing the internet, otherwise it'll also deactivate its Wi-Fi until you reboot it. Dumb, I know, but hey, I didn't build the thing. Lastly, be sure to check the integration for compatibility. There are some newer models that aren't supported, but my S8 Pro Ultra works great. Let's dig in. So assuming yours is broken like mine was, the first thing you'll need to do is to remove the Hacks integration. Go to Hacks, locate the integration, click the three dots on the right, and then click Delete. Then restart Home Assistant. Next, you'll need to install the native integration. Navigate to Settings, Devices and Services, and if your vacuum isn't automatically detected, click Add Integration. Then search for RoboRock. Enter the email address and password for your RoboRock account, then enter the code that they email to you. Now that we've got the integration added and configured, you'll see that two devices were added, the vacuum and the dock. Let's start with the vacuum. Here you can see all the controls, configuration, and information for the vacuum, including the map. A couple of things worth noting. All the sensors by default display seconds, so you end up with these crazy huge values like hundreds of thousands of seconds. Just click the one you want to change, select minutes, hours, days, whatever. The next thing worth noting is that for some stupid reason, area is only displayed in square meters, even if you've set it to square feet in the app. I've not been able to find any way to change this. I suppose it's a shortcoming on the part of the developers of this integration. Next, let's take a look at the dock. There's not a lot of stuff to look at here, but what is here is important, namely the dock error. More on that in a minute. Next up, let's make this useful and get it on the dashboard. I didn't design anything fancy for this since it's just a vacuum and I'm more of a function over form kind of guy on this topic, but I added a page to my dashboard and put all this stuff on there. At the top is a mushroom chips card that has a chip for each room on the main floor of my house. Tapping on one of those chips will send the vacuum to clean that room. That also broke when the integration changed, so let's look at the code. Beginning on line 5 is the code that cleans my kitchen. To find the segment IDs for your rooms, head over to Developer Tools and then click the Actions tab and enter the code that you see here. Change the entity ID to your vacuum, obviously, then click Perform Action, and you'll get a list of all your rooms. Note that this does require that you've actually named the rooms in the app. Back on the dashboard page now, the tap action is Call Service, then the service is Vacuum.SendCommand. 
Under the data section on line nine, the command we're gonna send is app segment clean. The kitchen is segment 18 at my house. The target on lines 13 and 14 is my vacuum. Then I set the hold action and double tap action to none, gave it an icon and named it. I just repeated that for each room in the house. In addition, I added a chip to the top of each room and labeled it clean. So if I'm on the page for the kitchen, for example, I can just tap that clean button and the vacuum will get to work on that room. Underneath the mushroom chips card is my map. For this, it just used a picture entities card. And this is the code for that here. Very easy. The next thing on the dashboard is an entities card that shows all the info and settings. If you don't want to pause the video and type out 35 lines of nonsense, all the code will be up on my Patreon page. Just scan the QR code here on the screen. I used to try including the code in the description of the videos, but YouTube limits the number of characters you can have in the description and the formatting always got messed up. So I found it's much easier and much more reliable to just upload text files for all the various pieces of code. There's all kinds of benefits available, like early access to videos with no ads, but don't worry, if all you want is code, it's super cheap. Finally, the last thing that we need to take a look at are the automations to notify me when there's an issue. I've configured three different automations. The first makes a TTS announcement and sends push notifications when the wastewater is full. This just looks at the dock error, and when the state changes from anything to wastewater tank full, then it lets me know. The next monitors the vacuum for errors, such as when something gets stuck in the pickup rollers. This happens a lot more than you would think here, like when my son leaves a straw on the floor, or the vacuum tries to pick up a cat toy, shit like that. So if the vacuum error changes from none to anything else and stays there for one minute, and it's after 8 a.m. and before 9 p.m., then make a TTS announcement and send some push notifications. The last automation that I wrote is another dock error notification, and that is when the clean water tank is empty. Same deal as wastewater full, just trigger on a different value. Notifications are the same, make a TTS announcement, and send a couple push notifications. There we go. Done. What do you guys think of the new set? It's been a while since I've shot a video, so it took me quite a while to get the lighting sorted out and the camera settings and all that kind of stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed this video though. Uh, let me know what you think in the comments about the new look. I've got a future video coming up all about the lighting. I'm using a Quinn LED Dig Octa with WLED to control all this. Uh, you can probably see behind me that there's actually white and RGB strips. It's pretty great. I'll teach you guys all about it soon, as well as some other really cool LED projects that I've done around the house, also using WLED with various controllers. I hope that you found this episode's t-shirt funny, and I hope that I accomplished my goal of teaching you how to get your RoboRock added to Home Assistant. Thanks for watching, and until next time, go automate something, will ya?